The following is by Maurice Nicole. This was given on May the 18th, 1946. Commentary on self-remembering. We are taught in this work that we are not conscious and that we do not remember ourselves. The work says that the chief difficulty confronting any higher stage of humanity or of oneself is due to the absence of consciousness. We imagine we are fully conscious and that everything we do and feel and think is a conscious process. However, the work says that man is asleep and that sleeping people can never bring about a better state of affairs. Our level of being is characterised by this state of sleep, which we are told first of all to study in ourselves. This state of sleep, which defines from one angle our level of being, inevitably attracts the life belonging to that level of being, the result of which we can see in the world today. Were people even a little more conscious, the whole state of outer life would alter and what everyone thinks should be done in the name of common sense could be done. As you know, the emphasis in this work is laid on this factor called consciousness. This work is not based on faith or hope or love directly, but on consciousness. Consciousness in the work is called light. For example, if I remain in my ordinary state of consciousness, which is really a state of sleep, my level of being will attract what belongs to it. On a small scale, some people are a little more conscious and others a little less. A man of low being, a man without any trace of self-observation, if he is in power, will attract all that belongs to this level of being. Tonight I wish to speak once more about self-remembering and what the work teaches in regard to how we can change our own level of being. You know that this work teaches us to become more conscious of ourselves and that this begins with a certain form of self-observation. We are told to observe ourselves along certain lines which are quite definite and which everyone should know. Now self-remembering is an act which can be directed towards anything you like. A person may, for example, always remember his or her own misery and keep it in the forefront of themselves. The work calls this negative self-remembering. This is not really a conscious act as self-remembering must become eventually, but it is a mechanical self-remembering. Take, for instance, your different forms of internal accounts that you have made in the past, that is, what you think of other people and what other people owe you, all the incidences in which you feel that you have not been given a proper chance. If you keep all this in the forefront of yourself, it is exactly an example of negative self-remembering. Which self are you remembering in such a case, or which selves? You are remembering negative selves or eyes. That is, you do not really, in the work sense, remember yourself, but you remember certain selves in you quite easily, and these selves are in the negative side of centres. People feel that they are no good. This is negative self-remembering and it leads nowhere. Real self-remembering is to try to remember something that you are not, if you allow this paradox for the moment to pass without argument. All real self-remembering begins with something to do with this work. For example, it is said that when you remember yourself, you must try to remember your aim. Your aim must always be connected with something that concerns the ideas of this work, and to form such an aim you must already have had some considerable experience of self-observation from different angles of the work. When you make an aim which is the definite result of self-observation, say that you are always negative in connection with something or other in the past or in the present or both, then you can make a real work aim not to express this negative emotion outwardly and eventually not to identify with it internally in your intellectual and emotional centres. This begins to form what is called deputy steward in yourself, i.e. you put some eyes that begin to understand what this work is about in charge of you, so that although you may constantly forget yourself, fall asleep, you are reminded that something is wrong in regard to your inner state. Eventually steward will begin to appear. Steward is a much higher level than deputy steward and comes down from above as help for you. Above steward lies real eye. If we could get in touch with real eye, 
directly without having to pay all that is necessary for this inner development, then we should be able to remember ourselves in the work sense of that term. But we have to start from where we are and gradually by a process of inner separation and selection learn not to go with certain eyes and give the preference to other different eyes which stand on a slightly higher level of our average being. But negative self-remembering is one of our very great difficulties and will stand in the way of any further inner growth. It is very easy to feel that one is no good, that one understands nothing, that one is not making any progress. It is very easy to yield to these eyes that say, if only this, if only that. All this is negative self-remembering and has to be separated from eventually. In fact, it is sometimes very astonishing to realise that what we thought was our genuine humility is nothing of the kind, and that it is nothing but an artifice rising from our false personality, that it is a form of vanity or self-pride. You have heard that the only thing that we can sacrifice is our suffering. What does sacrifice mean? Sacrifice means originally to make holy. Does it mean that we have to make our suffering holy? No, its meaning is far deeper. As long as I identify with my suffering, as long as I ascribe it to myself, I will remain identified with it. Now, whatever was made holy originally meant that with which all personal connection had been given up. It belonged then to God. If you like, you can substitute for the word holy the word conscious. You cannot become conscious of anything in yourself as long as you identify with it. To become really conscious of anything in yourself is to be no longer identified with it, no longer it. If I become conscious of my mechanical forms of suffering and internal account making and my negative states, they are no longer me. I detach myself from them. I let them go, as it were. I no longer feel myself by means of them. As a result, my feeling of myself will change. This act allows transformation to work and whatever is real in your suffering you will meet on a higher level, completely transformed into something else. But as long as you tie yourself down to your suffering and really feel yourself through your suffering, in fact feel your own importance in this way, you cannot expect any transformation. As I once said long ago, it is like standing on a plank and trying to lift the plank. You have to step aside and then it is quite easy to lift it. Whenever we remember ourselves in the mechanical sense by remembering our miseries and suffering, we are like Lot's wife. Our heads are turned round the wrong way and we look back into the past and then we are nourished by all sorts of unhappy memories which are engraved on rolls in negative parts of centres. We have to remember that we are now in this work. This at once is a real form of self-remembering. A negative person must learn through personal self-observation not to remember his accounts and not to go with typical small negative eyes that lie around like sharp points in the ground which only open old wounds. We have, said Gurdjieff on one occasion, to learn how to walk. In order to walk it is necessary to have good shoes and he added that he had leather to sell from which it was possible to make good shoes, but that everyone had to make his own shoes out of this leather that G had for sale. We must understand, of course, that he was talking about walking in oneself and avoiding dangerous places. Then we can walk in life without being upset and hurt by all the changing events that come to us from every quarter. Enough has been said to show that self-remembering does not mean always to remember your negative self. In this connection, I will give you one definition of external considering and its meaning. It was said on one occasion at the early groups that external considering means to forget oneself and to think what the other wants, and it was added that in this way two results will follow. The first is that one can help, and the second is that one can get help. But if you really come to think about the whole question, you will see that all self-remembering is simply forgetting yourself, your ordinary self, your ordinary negative eyes, your ordinary forms of internal considering and all the rest of it and feeling certain that some further state of yourself exists above all this personal uproar that takes place all day long in each one of you 
with which you keep on identifying. And when the work says that we have real eye above us, as you must understand this act, so to speak, of separating from false personality, deliberately at some moment every day, is designed to make it possible for us to come in contact with the first traces of real eye, which is already there, and which is our real goal.